APCO Educational Topic Number 28, Postpartum Infection. The rates of postpartum complications have been increasing in recent decades, thought to be mainly secondary to the increased rates of cesarean deliveries. Early recognition and treatment of postpartum infections decrease maternal morbidity and mortality. The objectives of this video are to list the risk factors for postpartum infection, list common postpartum infections, and lastly develop an evaluation and management plan for the patient with postpartum infections. Here you are, four medical students extraordinaire. The four of you receive four distinct pages that a postpartum patient has had an elevated temperature. Let's start with a basic definition of what we consider to be a fever. A temperature above 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit is considered a fever. How do we approach the patient with a postpartum fever? We should always start with a good history. Ask the patient if there's a source of pain or redness or drainage. Find out from the patient whether she had a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section and whether there were any complications during the pregnancy or labor course. Determine whether she has any medical issues or any other risk factors that would increase her risk of poor wound healing, such as smoking. On physical examination, try to identify the source of the infection by focusing on the important organ systems that could be infected in the postpartum time. What are the common postpartum infections that will be in our differential diagnosis? Urinary tract infection, wound infection, mastitis or breast abscess, endometritis, septic pelvic thrombophobitis, drug reaction, C. difficile associated diarrhea, or complications related to anesthesia. We will concentrate on the first four items on our differential since these are the four more common etiologies for postpartum infection. Women who have had a Foley catheter or a vaginal procedure at increased risk of developing a urinary tract infection, so that's pretty much any postpartum patient. Bacteria of the normal bowel flora are the most common pathogens, including E. coli, Klebsiella, Proteus, and Enterobacter. In terms of therapy, don't forget to ask her if she is breastfeeding, for this will influence which antibiotic you choose. The most common antibiotics for treating urinary tract infection in the postpartum time are either nitrofurantone or acephalosporin. It is very rare for a patient to have an infection of the perineal laceration or episiotomy site. Despite the millions of bacteria that are present at this site of healing, less than 1% of women will develop an infection. If she is in that unlucky 1%, she will often present with pain and purulent discharge from the perineal laceration repair site. Like all wounds, as they heal, the pain should decrease. Pain that starts to increase during the recovery phase should be a clue that something may be wrong. Most wound infections are cesarean section wound infections, so this is thus our largest risk factor. Patients who've had a cesarean section after labor are at particular risk, and additional risk factors include diabetes, obesity, and smoking. The organisms responsible for wound infections are streptococcus, staphylococcus species, and gram-negative organisms. Acephalosporin is generally the first line of treatment, and this will be inpatient or outpatient depending on the severity of the infection. Any breastfeeding patient is at risk of developing mastitis, and this topic is covered more fully in our lactation video. Staph aureus is the most common organism involved, and treatment is generally a 7-10 to 10 day course of dicloxacillin. The route of delivery is also the single most important risk factor for developing endometritis. Having a cesarean section is also the biggest risk factor. Other risk factors include prolonged rupture of membranes, prolonged internal fetal monitoring, anemia, and decreased socioeconomic status. Endometritis tends to be a polymicrobial infection involving two or three aerobic and anaerobic organisms from the genital tract. Patients are admitted to the hospital and placed on broad-spectrum IV antibiotics. Gentamicin and clindamycin are usually the first-line therapy. This concludes the APCO video on postpartum infections. We've discussed the most common infections, we've discussed risk factors, and developed an evaluation and management plan for a patient with a postpartum infection.